losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need We're broken, it's tragic We're not all elastic But maybe there's magic Believe you could have it And I know of sadness The anxious and panic The infinite vastness Of all that is blackness Today I'm doing a little bit of a different video. Um, I have talked a lot about my weight in most of my videos, even if the theme or the topic hasn't been a, like, it's more directed about mental health or autism or ADHD and that, but I do tend to bring up my weight a lot. So today I wanted to do a different video. Um, it's still based on Jubilee questions. so. People might get annoyed with me thinking that it's like just stealing, but, um, I mean, I have to kind of, I can just make up questions on my own and just make up my own video, but because people enjoy those videos and people like to get others points of view, I always want to, not always, but I'm just going to stick to, um, some of them for a while if they pertain to me. <laughs> so this one's different today because I wanted to do, um, do all plus size people think the same? And I think we've gathered by now that <laughs> people, obviously no one thinks exactly the same, no matter what group of people you're a part of, but, um, you know, it is, those videos are like really um educational in a way and help you gain a different perspective and and helpful to different communities of people and so as someone who's just a little backstory of me um well both my parents were overweight when I was born and my cousin specifically remembers when I was a baby I was like a rubber chicken like I was like long and skinny skinny and loose <laughs> and and I think I was about normal size until I don't know exactly um I feel like anything before age four or five is like a, a real blur like I have spe specific memories and then Sometimes memories are triggered by like family videos and stuff, which I haven't seen in a really long time, but they used to help me remember those occasions. But um, let's just say around school age is when I started to become overweight and uh, was bullied for that. So um, 
you know, like my parents, they did cook a lot of the time, but gradually as the years went on and they both seemed to be suffering more and more with their own mental health and poverty due to my dad's addictions, such as chain smoking, alcoholism, um, gambling, pawning things to get money to gamble, things of that nature. Um, at times we were eating well and at times we were like there was condiments in the fridge and I was having like mayo and relish sandwiches and stuff like that. So like part of my weight was completely out of my control because if I'm just shoving bread down there and some mayo and stuff, it's like there's no, I'm not getting proper protein, I'm not getting proper nutrition, minerals, vitamins and everything. So I'm eating more and more carbs to try to like satisfy myself and it's like or satiate and it's just not working and then I'm starving half the time so I am overeating and that's where a lot of my like what I struggle with today all stemmed from is my childhood and uh you know it's just it's really complicated I was just cooking for myself at a very young age so when you're young are you making the right choices did I know anything about nutrition did I know about calories in calories out and protein and fat and sugar and all I know is that um, my parent I'm born in 1988 so I'm 35 now uh, my mom was I think 32 when I was born my dad was 30 and uh, my grandma if she were still alive today she would be about 90 I need something and so we're talking very old age beliefs about body and bo body positivity there was none of that it was always a lot of fat shaming my mom battled her weight like and she was the fat kid at times and then she was kind of like just curvier and stuff as a teenager she's gone up and down in her weight until like her adulthood she's always stayed large and kind of fluctuated but you know like when she was young her own family members would make fun of her and say like she sh sh what she should be like the fat person in the circus or whatever like things like that like real cruelty and because back then body positivity is just there was none of that you were just like fat or skinny no in between and everyone f strived to be skinny not curvy not like nothing just skinny so um so I think my parents battling their own weight just led to it was just felt like a never-ending almost daily conversation always like well, don't eat that. You're going to get diabetes. Like my dad was diabetic and don't do this. Don't do that. And it was just like constantly being like, not only was I abused and we're going through like poverty and my dad's an alcoholic at times, but it's like, then weight is always brought up. It's just like things, I was, things were just never normal, never okay. It was never okay to be me as I was. And it's just led to a lifelong battle of everything from eating disorders to just the way I feel about myself and how I see myself when I look in the mirror. And then also like long-term physical effects from the weight loss weight gain. And I'm going to include photos of myself before and after I've like yo-yoed with my weight for so long. But one positive I can say today is that I've literally beaten three eating disorders in the past year and a half which is bulimia anorexia and binge eating like on and off since I was a teenager and I'm just proud to say that I finally feel like I have that under control and it's just been completely balanced at times I do know I need to be watching my sugar more because I kind of am starting to feel the effects of that um, so I am going to try to do low carb again soon, 
But the reason I didn't do a specific diet this time around is because of diet culture and how it's so harmful. And I really just wanted to lose it as slow and steady as I could to try to, because in the past it's always been all or nothing, which leads to the guilt and shame when you do eat something that's not on your, in your diet. So like this last year and a half, it's been like completely balanced. Sometimes I'm fasting, not having one to two meals a day, um, balanced, like lots of veggies, lots of good sources of protein, more nuts in my diet than before, things like that. I'm pescatarian, so I only eat uh, fish for like um, an animal source of protein. Actually, I have had chicken on and off. I want to get back to not having chicken because I was like vegetarian and pescatarian since I was like in grade nine. But sometimes I really hate the that's a video for another day. I just really hate um, factory farming where we get our sources of meat from and the quality of life that some of them have. And so I, I could be doing better to buy a different source, I suppose. Um, but anyway, like I said, that's a video for another day. But um, where was I in that? So yeah, just beating an eating disorder, like three different types of eating disorders. Like, thank God it never got to the extreme of severe anorexia, severe bulimia. But uh, the reason I decide to mention that is because regardless of how severe it was in my life, we're talking like 20 years of that on and off. There's still an effect. There's still, there's people who do, do not do that. There's people who assume that people who do those things are only like stick thin. And I just am here to tell you that it can affect anybody at any size, any age. So, um, yeah, let's get to these questions. A lot more insight will come in to effect through that. Uh, oh, just ba a little bit more of my backstory. So, yeah, I didn't really get too well into that. So, um... I kind of maintained with like physical activity. I was always like biking, walking everywhere, but I was still bigger amongst my friends. Like I just hit puberty a lot faster. I was taller. I was not petite, not, I was big boned. That is a thing. Like I, I was fat, but I was also big boned. Like you could take all the fat off my body and standing next to someone with a petite frame, I was still just bigger. So I was definitely, um, made to feel different for that and uh then finally grade seven I was like you know starting to get a bit chubbier but then in grade eight I really blew up from probably being in like my I don't know 180s to 230 235 I was just really depressed from things going on at home and kind of like a group of friends just dropping me out of the blue and bullying and all that stuff like as I got older and older I just had realized how screwed up things were at home and how a lot of my friends experiences weren't like mine and I was also undiagnosed autistic and ADHD at the time so I struggled in a lot more ways back then than I do today. And especially in terms of communication, there's just no way that I'd be able to have this conversation with you guys like the way that I'm doing right now. I was very like locked in my mind. And um, so let's see. So then the following year <laughs> in grade nine, I lost, I went all the way from like 235 or whatever to like 160 was the lowest I got to. And that was with an extreme diet called the South Beach diet, which is like keto, but even stricter because it's like eggs and veggies for breakfast, cheese as a snack, a salad for lunch, um, fish and veggies for dinner and some sort of like ricotta or something for dessert. So it was like very dairy based, um, it's like a good diet. Like that is how we're supposed to be eating 
maybe with or without the cheese like that is how people are supposed to be eating that's the reason why there's so much disease and illness and obesity today but when you're just a kid and your body's going through changes to go to that extreme from one to the next I was already left with a body that pretty much resembled somebody who, well, extreme weight loss, but weight gain and weight loss. So stretch marks, um, cellulite, loose skin, um, you know, like it's hard for me to even wear pants that are my size. Like they can be loose and I still have a problem with like fupa. <laughs> and uh you know just a lot of guilt and shame because did I feel better when I lost weight like of course things look better all the way around but when you took my clothes off like underneath it told a very different story like um just especially my lower stomach I don't know what the technical term for it is but I just have one of those it's like it kind of, it's like flat and then my stomach hangs a bit like that ridge that you get like some people who are even skinny still have that so when you're bigger it's even more pronounced but anyway so and then after that um I gradually started gaining more but I always stayed around like 200 205 in my adult years like in my 20s I always went sometimes I would climb up to 220 230 again and then I would like lose so I was pretty good at maintaining um with just having a physically demanding job not having my own vehicle so I'm walking biking everywhere things of that nature like dancing going out with my friends and then uh when something like a like crucial point in my life where I was like extremely depressed I went all the way from like 200 to like 300 <laughs> so like 100 pounds in probably like a year or less and it was just from a lot of trauma and having kind of like being comfortable for the first time in my life a little bit financially so I was like overindulging like almost every day I was eating out instead of cooking for myself because I was like depressed and I had money and anyway so ever since then I pretty much have stayed in the high 200s but then a couple of years ago I did keto and uh and um I lost 70 pounds, but then the pandemic hit and I like it affected my job and all the things that was making me feel good about myself. So I ended up gaining it all back. <laughs> and finally, here I am today. Um, I pretty much kept the weight back on for about two years, I think. And then in this past year and a half, I've gradually lost slowly and healthy for the first time in my life without binge eating, like without dieting, without uh, extreme guilt and eating disorders and everything. I just, it's been like a balance of physical activity, eating healthy, and at times like intermittent fasting. Just like if I happen to sleep more one day and then I'm not having my first meal till noon or something like that so not like intentional um like starvation just uh like out of habits and nothing's wrong with intermittent fasting every now and then they do say that there are benefits to that so it's just when you don't take it to the extreme of like maybe one meal a day or doing it for several days all the time but, uh, okay, so that's pretty much my backstory. That is a lot longer than I thought. We're 20 minutes in. But now I want to get to these questions just so you get a little bit of better insight into all of this. And I should pause this just so everything's... Okay, so finally on to these questions. Do all plus-size people think the same? I am offended 
by the word fat. So it's strongly agree, somewhat agree, agree or neutral, and then somewhat disagree and, and strongly disagree. So, oh, and another thing is I'm doing all these questions from the perspective of also someone with CPTSD, autism, and ADHD. So just to get a different point of view, like from someone who's been through similar experience or just, you know, autistic sharing an autistic voice on this subject. So, um, I'm not offended by the word fat. I think I was definitely as a child, but today, um, I think more scientifically like it, <laughs> I am more fat. There's more fat on my body. It's, it's just true. So it doesn't really bother me. And I mean, if somebody just went right up to my face and said, you're fat, I mean, it was still probably hurt like regardless of what I tell myself like that would probably hurt my feelings but at the same time I'd be like yes you're right <laughs> like um like I think more and more plus size people are feeling that same way so they think like okay well if what you're trying to say is to like hurt my feelings you're not gonna win <laughs> um so I'll just say, like, I guess it's more neutral. Like, internally, it'll probably hurt the feelings of the little girl I once was, where it wasn't so much my choice in all of those decisions. Like, I wasn't the one buying the groceries. I didn't know, no one was telling me, monitoring. Um, I just didn't feel like anyone cared some of the time, so... um I guess I lean today as an adult more towards the uh, strongly or somewhat disagree. So next is being plus size is a choice. Well, of I do feel, I do believe in calories in, calories out. Um, there are still people who are bigger and who are healthy, but sometimes I have a hard time telling myself believing in that because, uh, well, okay. So maybe in your teenage years to twenties to maybe your thirties, you could still be considered healthy. But a doctor has told me that if you take any overweight person on the street, they all have some form of fatty liver. So it is kind of scary. It is something to think about. I think that only as time goes on, it becomes less healthy, like whether it affects your liver or other organs, um, that brown fat or whatever that sits around your organs is supposed to be unhealthy. You have a higher risk of diabetes. Like I'm not here to fat shame anyone. I'm just saying what I know. And, um, if you are completely healthy all through your life and you're big and plus size, then like, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> like, and I think there are communities of people that are bigger, whether like, for whatever reason and you know they're living into their 80s 90s just like anyone else but I just know for me it's a choice and then on the other hand it's not really a choice because it's like well okay say you, like me you're not smoking not drinking not doing drugs you don't have other addictions but food and sugar is your addiction. It's a very hard to get out of the way of thinking. It's really hard to get out of those habits. So I think it's pretty neutral. Like, um, like just like when you say drug addiction is a choice, it is, it is somewhat of a choice to go out and get help, but sometimes it affects your mental health so greatly that you really cannot even reach out for help or the help is like simply not there so I guess I'm kind of completely on the fence about that like being neutral like it is and it isn't it there are metabolic disorders I think that I myself have something I haven't looked into but just starting from a young age when you're eating all that processed crap and 
it has taken me, it takes me a lot of work to lose weight, a lot more than some. And, uh, and I do want the younger population of plus size people to know that, like, you might be healthy now, but please do consider that like please look into the long-term health effects of it because for a long time I was bigger and I just thought well I'm healthy my blood work always comes back normal my um my uh my heart rate and my blood pressure is always fine so everything's fine but then you get to a point where it does change and not for the better sometimes so but yeah, you, I'm not a doctor, so please discuss that with your like own healthcare provider and hopefully, you know, they have, they know you better that, well, you know yourself best, but they might know you just as well. So, um, next is I want to lose weight. I do personally because, so strongly agree could I live the rest of my days comfortably as I am now? I don't think so because I'm starting to feel the effects of something and I think it is that I've been overindulging in sugar at times. Like although I've gradually lost weight over this year and a half um, by balance, sometimes the balance swings in the other direction where I know I'm getting a bit too much sugar and stuff it's not hard to do when you're not doing low carbon keto it's not hard to get way too many carbs in a day and sugar like when you're having coffees or bread and desserts and even some fruit like fruit is completely healthy and natural no one's going to tell me that no one should be having fruit but it's just a matter of all that stuff combined um i have been trying to make fruit as my dessert and that does help a lot um, but personally, I just want to lose weight because before I used to be so hard on myself when I was around 200 pounds, but now today as an adult, like I would be happy to be back where I was and I wouldn't be so hard on myself. Like I was, I was fit. I was muscular. Like, even though that's when my fibromyalgia symptoms started back then, um, I was curvy. I was into things. So that's like where my goal is today. I definitely don't plan to get to like my optimum, like, I don't know, 150 or when whatever. I just want to get to kind of where I was and because not everyone needs to be like 120 pounds. <laughs> Some people look a lot better around their high hundreds and, and, you know, women back then used to be a lot smaller framed and shorter so of course they're going to be closer to 100 pounds or whatever I don't think anyone should be 100 pounds but you know what I mean like 120 130 like petite short small frame people and even short people who are a bit curvier like there's no shame in not being anywhere near like 100 120 pounds but um So yeah, I'm definitely more on the other side in terms of where other people were in the video. The other people in the video seem to be more accept fully accepting of their bodies the way they are. And I definitely still have the mindset that I want to improve. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like even when I get down to the 200s again someday, I'm still plus size. <laughs> and... Yeah, but I need to lose weight because I just feel like there's things that I'm avoiding right now in my health that I'm worried about affecting my future. And so I know that could have to do with becoming diabetic or adding too much inflammation to my body, just something. So I know that weight loss can help with that, that really nothing else could help with unless I decide to take some sort of medication or like look into it further but I don't want to take medication I hope to lose weight and that it'll help like for one example I started taking turmeric ew my tongue's like part yellow still 
<laughs> but you know, I was having some like extreme pain the other day that I've been ignoring and one dose of heavy turmeric and like the pain is completely gone. So I don't know if that's linked to it or not, or I've just been feeling a lot less stressed the last few days, but yeah, that's um, something I want to try to include into my diet. So next question is, skinny people get more privileges? Absolutely. In society, um, you know, it's the standard to be skinny. There's more clothing options that look nice. Like when you go to Walmart, the plus size section half the time looks like there's nothing, not very often or stores like that there's something nice or sexy or like there's it's just like a very older generation of style there usually and not everyone wants to dress like that like so they have to resort to online shopping I hate online shopping because my body's very different like I don't I don't I'm not very busty so a lot of plus size clothes is meant for women with large breasts and I don't have that. So it's very hard for me to do online shopping. And, but then you go to like the junior or lady section and they have a lot nicer options. So like in terms of clothes, like how just everything's like sitting in a bus, sitting on an airplane, everything's a, like meant for people who are more average to skinny size. I think that there's been times in my life where my friends and people around me have even treated me differently. When I had lost weight, it's like just being showered with compliments and they kind of treat you like they're a prize or something. Like it's something that reflects them. Like you looking better somehow influences I don't know. I've had some pretty awful experiences going up and down with my weight like that, where, you know, even just going and ordering a coffee or getting some food at a restaurant, like the person taking your order is like not treating you as nicely. Like, or they're kind of, you could just see the judgment on their face or they don't even say hello to you when you come in. Like maybe that's just them and how they're treating everybody, but I notice a huge extreme difference when I'm when I was smaller to when I was bigger. And it's honestly just quite sad. Like, but I'm also autistic too. So when so sometimes like I use manners a lot, but like I always say thank you and say please and whatever, but because my facial expression's pretty like blank sometimes people just automatically assume I'm rude which isn't true and or maybe the tone of my voice or whatever the case is and so it's kind of a mixture of both I think but I definitely notice like the privilege with being smaller and I've never been fully skinny but you know you get more attention possibly more opportunities with work I think I got more tips when I was smaller versus when I gained weight in my years of serving so yeah um last question is I love my body um you know I wish I could say I completely love my body like in different terms, like I completely love my body. I'm so thankful that for everything it's been through, um, here I am today and I do have like fibromyalgia, which I do deal with chronic pain. And that diagnosis started when I was a lot smaller in my life, when I was a lot more physically fit, when I cared a lot more with what I put on my body and it just didn't matter. It still came on. They do say fibromyalgia is linked to CPTSD and I cannot afford to get proper therapy. So I'll, I've just been managing everything on my own. But when it comes to the outside, like I think I love the inside. I love me and who I am and what I stand for and everything I've accomplished. I love those aspects of my body. But when it comes to the physical, like the outside, it is hard to love sometimes. Like I... I don't have the ideal plus size or like frame of like big boobs and like there are qualities to my body I like and stuff but um it's just like I don't seem to fit anywhere like with my body and 
the thing I just hate the most is that at a very young age, I already had the body of like, you know, loose skin, stretch marks, cellulite, all that stuff. Uh, when I lose weight, it's not like exactly a pretty sight. That's something I want to love more, but to be honest, someday I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to fully love that until like I get to more my goal weight and after surgery, but it's like, well, with after surgery, you still have scars. You still, nothing's perfect. I don't like, I don't, I'm not striving for perfection whatsoever. I just would like to be a little, you know, it's just very 50, 50. I, the question is, do I love your, do I love my body? It's about the exterior, but I feel 50, 50 because of the other parts of me that I do love. So I feel a lot more clear in my thoughts and mind today. My last video was very, <laughs> I think I was, um, like carb overload or something. It does affect like my thinking and everything. Uh, but yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed my video and I'm going to keep doing these about various topics. Um, I just think I have a lot to share. I think I can relate to a lot of people and different, you know, so many different areas and I think I can hopefully help people and I hope my message is never like shaming other people like it's always judgment of myself and and I think we all do judge one another sometimes like whether it be consciously or subconsciously but I hope no one takes anything I've said in my video and like feels personally attacked like sometimes I am autistic so sometimes when I say things it's very blunt and filter free and so it's not always nice to hear or I say it the wrong way and I don't mean to so please let me know because I could work on those things or try to but sometimes it's just gonna happen <laughs> but anyway um Thank you so much. My last little thing is I'm going to give you a view of where I'm sitting right now. It's like just a beautiful sight in Brentwood, Victoria, like around Victoria, BC. And I hope you have a good day.